super excited for the next 30 minutes. Welcome. Hi, Jane. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So I'm very honoured that you've agreed to do this because I know you've been asked to do lots of these. So I'm <laughs> delighted that you agreed to do ours. So thank you very much. No, well, thank you for having me, um, no. really. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of the shy one, so I don't normally kind of do these things, but it's an absolute pleasure. And I'm here for you, so feel free well, to Well, thank you. Me. Well, we've got, anyone's got questions, please send them in so we will get them answered. But there's just so much we can talk about because actually you are you are really shy I know that because I've met you a lot of times but I think that almost makes it more intriguing because people don't know much about you so I'm going to see how much we can unearth in the next 30 minutes <laughs> in a good way in a good way so before we do that just obviously you spend your life traveling because session styling is your thing and you're so what has lockdown been like for you um lockdown has been hard um yeah you know, a few wobbly days. Um, I, I mean, I've, I suppose the, the, the positive things, the plus things have certainly been having more sleep, yeah. catching up on that, which is always, is always a problem. I think when you're working, you know, you're yeah. traveling so much, um, yeah. but really kind of having time, you know, precious time with the, the family, with my wife and kids. Uh, we live in Windsor and, um, I suppose really that's been the, the the biggest thing that I've kind of gained from this is just having you know more time with them and yeah. you know we've been doing the, you know the dog walks in the morning and we, we've we've all been really good we've been kind of behaving ourselves we've been staying at home we've been doing all the right things um, and at first it was kind of you know I think the novelty to, the novelty kind of was a bit like okay the unexpected of the expected what what's going to happen yeah and then you kind of um, you know, you sort of sit into it and think, okay, you know, it's going to be for a while. And then, and then you're like, okay, what can I do, you know, with myself? Yeah. And obviously for us kind of creatives that are used to, I think the, the, the one thing that I miss was people being, yeah. being with people that, you know, that whole connection that I didn't have anymore, obviously um, I did with my family, but, and then I, I mean, I'm now at home in my, this is my, Kind of little studio space upstairs of the house where looks like I a lab of, I, I kind of lock myself away when I'm kind of working on stuff when I'm kind of thinking of ideas and and working on collections and stuff I tend to come up here and I work on all my wigs and stuff um so I spent a lot of time up here my daughter um is a young aspiring photographer she's only okay. 19 she's kind of left school and we started um playing around with things kind of, you know, she was, we were doing these um, kind of stop motion moving heads. And so we spent a lot of time up here together. So that was fun. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think really, I mean, I mean, I'm back to work now. I've been back about, obviously we started a little bit earlier than the salons. I know the salons have only been, I think, is it two or three weeks? Well, now? yeah, England was the 4th of July and then Wales and, Sc and Scotland followed. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we had, in the session world, we went back shooting probably about two weeks, a week or so before that. I'm not quite yeah. sure how it all worked, how that worked out. But, um, you know, so I'm kind of back to work. We're not fully there yet. You know, I'm kind of, I mean, normally I'm sort of working most days, yeah. doing a few days up here and there. But at the moment, it's kind of a few jobs per week. You know, we're shooting tomorrow, we're shooting yesterday. Um, a lot of the jobs that I'm doing on location, we tend to be moving out of town, yeah. you know, shoot, I mean, South, you know, Brighton and all around now, I've been, you know, a couple of times a week for the last sort of four weeks, They've, all my shoots seem to be around there, right. you know, out of studios as well. But um, it's certainly good to be back, Jane, really. Yeah, I bet. And how much time would you on average spend away from home in a normal year? Oh. A lot. I mean, I, I get asked that quite a lot, and you know, my wife will probably by me. your wife. <laughs> my wife will remind me. No, she listen. She's she's the one that's telling you. She, when I'm ready to go, she's like, "Go on, go, go. <laughs> to go. We've had enough of you by now." Um, <laughs> and that, I mean, that was quite an interesting thing, you know. I mean, you know, my 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 kids are grown up. I mean, I spend a lot of time at home. Yeah. But obviously, I do travel a lot. Um, so, kind of certainly being home so much was was quite unusual um but um yeah we'll see. so 
talk to me about how it started. So why hairdressing and when? Was it always going to do it? Is it a family thing? How, how did it start? No, it's not a family thing. I mean, my family kind of, we were, it was, sports was a very big thing, you know, boxing really. Oh. I started, I was, not many people will know, but I was, some people will, but I, I boxed from the age of eight um, to I was 21, um, quite seriously for the Young England okay. squad. Wow. Um, so boxing was my world. I started that when I was eight. Around the time of being 14, um, there was this kind of, you know, we were going to football and there was this kind of thing called the casuals. And um, we were all into what clothes we were wearing. We were going to the hairdressers and having these flick heads. You know, every couple of weeks we'd go and have the, you know, the underneath, the undercut tightened up. And there was this salon called, um, a local salon called Trendsetters in the north of England where I come from. And I can remember being in there, just the whole buzz of the, the atmosphere of these cool hairdressers and, you know, they were playing Bowie music and, you know, there was, it was just a cool vibe. And I thought, wow, yeah. this is kind of, this could kind of be my environment, you know. So I basically got a Saturday job, not in the trendy cool trendsetters. It was more in a, you know, the kind of blue rinse brigade. It is, right. you know, the kind of local salon. Um, I'd used to I'd kind of go on a Saturday and after school on a Thursday and shampoo all these little old ladies' hair. And, and um, I think then I can, I, I definitely, it was a time where I'd be, I remember being in the staff room and seeing the front cover of Vogue or one of the beauty magazines and, you know, looking at the credits and people like Sam McKnight and Mary Greenwell, with, you know, they were the behind doing the hair. And I thought, you know, this is, you know, I want to cool. get on this. This is where I want to be you know, kind right. of doing both, you know, and that was quite an early age at 14. Um, from there, obviously leaving school, I kind of, you know, carried on doing my YTS scheme. Um, and then I started recognizing, getting more into hair yeah. um, and recognizing who was who. Um, I was very fortunate. My parents kind of, you know, said I wanted to go on a, a hair course. Right. Um, and I went to Clever Sorby in London. Okay. That was a time when Eugene was there and wow. um, Damien Carney was, was was training us. And and I just remember, although, you know, and this was obviously a bit later, I just remember thinking, wow, not only is there a world of sessions and photo yeah. shoots and, and all of these things, but London, you know, this thing is, this big monster is kind of, so I thought this is where I need to be. Right. Um, so I kind of went back home, kind of worked locally. Um, when I was 21, I had a bit of an accident with my neck. Um, I was on holiday with a couple of friends and I had a really freak, freaky diving accident, basically broke two of the vertebrae in my neck. Oh, God. Um, yeah, kind of set me back. I was in hospital for over a year. And wow. Said, yeah, yeah, I kind of, you know, three mates in the water, just diving in, obviously too shallow. Oh, you know, God. Yeah, of course. And, and anyway, but during that time of being in hospital, I realised that obviously I couldn't box anymore. No. I had to get my licence in. And hairdressing was my passion anyway. So I thought, you know, it just made me realise that all of those things I thought about um, being young, yeah. now was the time to do I suppose you appreciate life a little bit more. Yeah, of course. Um, and I kind of thinking, you know what, I'm going to go for this. And, you know, Sassoon's was the only place that I, I wanted to be. Okay. Um, so I kind of, you know, packed my bags and moved to Manchester. Okay. And who were you working with at Sassoon's then? Because obviously there was a real, that was 80s, wasn't it? So it was a, would have been a cool place to be. What a great time. What a great time of my yeah. life that was. I mean, Manchester was, you know, memorable. And, you know, I remember being... You, you obviously were aware of the Vardring scheme to, to yeah. work with um, Fidel Sassoon, you have to retrain. Yeah. So I was already a qualified stylist. Yeah. And you have to do the Sassoon's way. Um, I went and I, I suppose I was really lucky to have Bruce Macefield as, um, as my creative director, who was, who was just brilliant. Obviously now a really good friend of mine. Um, he, even though he's a Manchester City fan even though he's even a, though fan, he's a Manchester even City fan Bruce is a City fan yeah um, he, I mean no he's brilliant he kind of made me 
you know, he made he re- made me realize my potential. He kind of gave me that belief that I was kind of, you know, I could I was kind of better than I thought. Um, okay. He really encouraged me to go for once I kind of qualified as a Vardra to go for the the creative team um, right. and really kind of go for the assistant art director's position. Um, I mean, Manchester was an amazing time there. I mean, I was working with Richard Ashworth, you know, who now yeah. is he's behind the brand um, Seiko and Noise. Seiko. Peter Gray, yeah. the amazing session stylist. I mean, there were so many, you know, Diane, yeah. who's for me the best manager anyone could ever have. Um, you know, yeah. I, we, we were obviously set out to get our models. You know, you'd go out on the street and you'd kind of pick your yeah. models up and you'd come back and then you'd have this intense training, you know, through Bruce and the rest of the teachers. And I was kind of going to the model agencies all locally right. and kind of saying, listen, okay. you know, I need models. I'll cut their hair for free. So to base now, every night I was staying back late doing all these kind of great looking models hair. You know, weekends I was ha- hanging around the Hacienda, which was, you know, just the, the place to be. Time, you know, and, yeah. and, and pretty much kind of after a few years of being in Manchester, you know, my my clients became friends of mine, you know, and they were right. musicians, um, you know, Johnny Marr, kind of Liam Gallagher, you know, I was basically yeah. cutting their hair as clients and hanging around with them in the Hacienda at a weekend. So it was kind of, you know, that was really where it kind of first started, yeah. you know, kind of working with them bands. Um, and Bruce really was, you know, I mean, he, I, I never forget the day he came to me and said, okay, so, you want to do kind of session work and I've got a job for you. You know, you need to go to the, I think it was the GMEX at the time and um, take that need they had doing for their tour. You know, Howard had had this um, perm by someone in London, <laughs> not mentioning any names. What's good then? They, they, I can't say. They were. And basically <laughs> I went over to the GMEX and I said, okay, you've got a, curly hairy and I was like you know what I said let's turn into let's dreadlock it all oh so did you did do that, the as a take that I, fan did you do the dreads I, yeah yeah I was responsible for the dreads I got my beeswax out and I molded all these dreadlocks and that was it Howard with dreadlocks and I remember cutting you know Jason and Mark's gave me these feather cuts I shaved Robbie's hair off and yeah. at the time take that with this very squeaky clean kind of boy band and <laughs> not after that year, <laughs> it was a bit like what is going on you know we take that they're not washing their hair they've got these weird haircuts and but no that was um that was it's definitely a time where i re- more so i realized that this is where i felt more comfortable being around yeah. these people i mean it was great being in the salon but yeah i knew that it wasn't for me for you know too long for the long can i so julie medlin's asked and um, curious to know did tyler do an apprenticeship first so before you went to the zooms did you do an apprenticeship I did. My father was very much like, learn a trade, son. You know, whatever yeah. you do in life, learn a trade. And I did that. I did my, I started off with what it was YTS scheme then. And then I did my city and guilds. I think that was the last year or okay. something. Probably yeah. age away a little bit there. But, I, you know, so, yeah, I mean, I have my city and guild certificate. So it was an apprenticeship. Yeah. Okay. Leslie Jennison is sending you much love. I know you work with her. She said, great to see us both. Um, and Edward Hemmings, you're still a casual brother. So there's a well, message. That's, thank, you, <laughs> thank you very much, Edward. That means a lot. I'll tell my kids that one. Yeah, you see, that's, super trendy dad. That's super trendy really dad. Casual. So when did you decide what when we, did you feel you were ready to make the, the jump to kind of freelance editorial and leave leave what was a great position as art because you'd come to London then as art director as well, hadn't you? Yeah, well I, I kind of I, I think I was in Manchester for about six years. Right. And then obviously being assistant art director, your um <clears throat> your your next move is I feel like I've got sunshine on my head there. It's like it's like a halo, you look great. Oh it is. Um yeah. then the next position is going for art director. Um yeah. obviously not, you know, no salon holds too many art directors and Bruce, no. you know, was based in Manchester. So yeah. it's kind of like, okay, will you move to Cardiff or will you move to, you know, they were gonna, I think it's, they had plans of opening a salon in, in uh, Newcastle at the time. And yeah. I was like, no, 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 I need to, you know, I want to be, I'll wait, I want to be in London. Yeah. Anyway, the time came, they, I got promoted as art director. I moved to the Knightsbridge Salon, 
<clears throat> so okay. I was based there. Um, I mean, already I was kind of doing some kind of pretty cool people. You know, they were, you know, regularly booking me. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I was doing the Spice Girls at one point, um, working wow. with Victoria and Mel B. Um, Mel, uh, Victoria obviously introduced me to David. So I was doing a lot of stuff with David. So talk to me about David Beckham. Um, for many for many reasons, talk to me about David Beckham. But that was probably one of the most notorious styles he had. So talk us through how that happened and what you did. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I first met David, I think I was with Victoria. So I was doing a hair for some, I think it was the Mobo Awards or something. And she said, oh, will you cut David's hair for me? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, I will. I was, you know, I think he was England captain. As an Arsenal yeah. fan, I'll cut his hair. I was like, yeah, but David <laughs> is a true, I mean, you know, David's got Arsenal at heart anyway. anyway. No, he I hasn't. <laughs> he has. <laughs> but um, so, of course, I, I said, yeah, I mean, so I cut his hair and it was really then, you know, I mean, I, I, I was again, you know, doing a lot of stuff with David. I mean, I didn't, it was probably about a year after that that I gave him um, the skinhead right. and the mohawk after that. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I was kind of, that started in Manchester, really. Because that um, press coverage was huge yeah. over those. I mean, to be fair, anything either of them did with their hair at that time was just mm -hmm. national news. Yeah, I mean, I was at Vidal Sassoon's at the time, and I remember um, press office had to literally get me out of the salon in Knightsbridge because, you know, reporters were kind of coming to the reception right. and trying to, well, you know, how much does he charge? And, you know, there's all this yeah. news about, you know, they throw in all... You know, all they're of flying that. people around the world and all this. You know, all yeah. of that stuff, which yeah. you know was was really untrue at the time. Um, but yeah, no, you know, David is, you know, has been. I mean, I've been working with David now for over nineteen years. So right, and do you still work with him? I'm with him in a few weeks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So you decided to leave Sassoon's and you'd got some cool clients, but then how do you make the break into kind of obviously you had a lot of celebrity clientele, but you also and actually Edward Hemmings has asked how do you create such fresh images you do so many campaigns now like big campaigns um consumer I mean consumer brand campaigns but high-end fashion mm. campaigns H how did you break into that because I know for many session is something they really want to get into H how did that come about yeah I think um I mean I was, at the time I was still at Sassoon's I was doing you know some pretty good stuff. I mean, I was doing big campaigns with, you know, David and so on. And I think I really, I, apart from that, you know, I mean, I, I still say to this day, I mean, like, you know, if you look at, I think if you look at my work, you'll yeah. still see Sassoon's is there with certain elements. Yeah. Um, and for me, it is the backbone of any education anyone can be given. It, and, and I know there are some, you know, Tony and Guy and all these other countries do such an, I mean, I think education over the last, 15 years has just exploded. I mean, you know, everyone, the standard and the level of hair is, is just amazing. And yeah. so I kind of, you know, I have a lot of, I have a lot of thanks to Sassoon's for giving me that kind of those fundamentals and structure yeah. of where my work is now. But I also realized that I wanted to get up in the morning and do my thing. And yeah. that thing was a little bit different to what Sassoon's, you know, I was we'll do. should have been doing at the time. Yeah. Um, so I kind of, um, I really, I mean, it's my wife really. She kind of said to me, "Look, you know, you're doing great stuff, and you know, think about yourself now." And and yeah. so I made the move. I mean, she's kind of pretty good at those things, making me understand. You know, I'm always a little bit. I'm fine. You know, let's just move slow. Keep going as we are. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I looked for. Um, I thought about getting an agent. So I went to see this one particular agent who was one of the big guys mm. in the industry. And they, I mean, I didn't have anything in my book apart from some really big campaigns because I was working with, you know, some big celebrities yeah. at the time. Yeah. And they obviously took me on. And really, I kind of built up my portfolio with them and my clientele with them. And from that point now, I'm still doing the same thing, you know, real cross-section of editorial work. Yeah. Um, you know, the fashion week shows, kind of um, campaigns, ad campaigns, you know, beauty campaigns, and, um, you know, still a lot of celebrity. I'm, you know, working on a lot of red carpets, you know, for film. Do you have a favourite 
Do you have a favorite area in which you operate? Is there something that you absolutely love doing over and above other stuff? Um, I like doing hair. Right, so you, know, you don't mind wherever. Hair is my thing. I mean, I'm not, you know, being on stage and presenting stuff is kind of obviously, okay, I can do that now because I've yeah. done so much of it. It's not my favorite place. No. Um, presenting is okay, so, you know, so, I mean, teaching is something that I do and I love that. It's still yeah. not my place, you know, trying yeah. to, I mean, I, you know, I've, I'm a great believer that if I'm teaching, I'm showing someone how I, how I do it, not how you should do it. I think there's, yeah. you know, there's a difference. There's a big difference. Um, but doing hair is, you know, is where I kind of get off on. That's, that's super. And what, so, you know, as I said before, there are a lot of people who want to break into session. What advice would you give them? Um, work your nuts off, you know, don't turn <laughs> anything work. down. You know, don't turn anything down. Be available for as much as you can. Um, you know, I mean, now, even like now, you know, with my agent, I have, I'm a bit like, you know, just things that you would normally say, okay, I can't do, you know, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm going for it. You know, I, I, I'm it. kind of back in the seat again. And I'm like, I think um, being, just surrounding yourself with very cool people in the industry that, that you know, are like-minded yeah. and, you know, good at what they do and, and just try and absorb as much of that as you can keep your eyes open all the time. I mean, I, I say to my kids every day, just keep your eyes open, take everything in, yeah. you know, look at things and just and learn. learn from it. Learn from it. And I mean, I am really fortunate because you did a fantastic show for us at the British Hairdressing Awards um, the year before last, you opened the British Hairdressing Awards. And also I've seen the work you do um, because part of one of the roles you have is as global ambassador for Schwarzkopf Professional, isn't it? Yes. Um, yeah. So how, do, how did that come about? How do you, you know, because that's also an aspiration for many people. They want that role. Was that a chance meeting or just how did yeah, it happen? I mean, it's a position I'm very proud of. You know, I've, I've been with um, Schwarzkopf Professional now for... Hmm, it's a long 19 time. 19 years. Yeah. It's a long time. Physical. And there is a reason why I'm still with them. Um, because I believe in them. Um, you know, I work very closely. It, it, it all started basically with Simon Ellis. Of course. And, you know, me and Simon have basically we worked with each other at Sassoon. He was the um, I'm not sure his correct title, but basically Simon was the he was, was the clever one in the, in the company that yeah. you know did all the education, did all yeah. the shows. He, yeah. he realized that there was a session world out there. He realized that we needed to be a part of this. He yeah. really encouraged you know, a team, and it was a small team, you know, yeah. you know, Billy Curry, kind of Peter Gray, Sandy Hill, all these amazing session stylists. Um, he really supported that. And so I had a great, I mean, you know, I mean, that's probably going back over 25 years. I've, known, right. I've been working with Simon. Right. And when I left Sassoon's a couple of years after, Simon had, had left the company just before me. Right. And he was going in to work with Schwarzkopf Professional in Hamburg. And um, he kind of, we, we had a, you know, we sat down and had a nice bottle of wine. And, um, oh, good. which you always do with Simon. You do. And, um, and he said, you know, I'm kind of, I've got this collection within Schwarzkopf called Essential Looks. You know, it's kind of, it is what it is at the moment, but I really want to kind of push it forward, turn it yeah. upside down. Yeah. And I really want to bring people like you in, like not just, you know, but session stylists that yeah. have a different angle on things. And um, and we've been doing that now for over 19 years, you know, a collection twice a year. And, you know, Simon is a brave, brave man. He, you know, he, he, he foresee, you know, he believes in it. He goes yeah. for it. He Absolutely. Pushes it. You know, Jane, you've yeah, you know Simon really well, but yeah. he's the main reason. And also, you know, as a brand, um, you know, not just bigging them up because I work with them, but, you know, the marketeers that they have, you know, the, 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 the products that they're working on and the image drive yeah. that Essential Looks creates, I think, is a, is a really, yeah. you know, cool one. And how does that 
creative process work so if you're looking whether it's a, a campaign shoot that you're doing on your own for you know the amazing brands you work with or a, a Schwarzkopf shoot the essential looks how how do you where do you go to get your inspiration and how does that process kind of start um first of all I need to listen um yeah. there's always there's a lot I think when you're working with a big brand like Schwarzkopf Professional or one of the campaigns that I'm working on there's always a brief you know there is um they have a certain vision what they need to go down and it's and I think it's my job to understand that yeah um to also build on it to kind of help you know bring something to the table yeah um and I mean I'm, I'm lucky with with working with Simon and the team at Shaska because they kind of I mean we understand that there has to be a commercial reality to yeah it. of course um and sometimes I can go off on one but they allow me to go off on one and, you know, they never rein me in. Right. Um, and then if it's something that works, they can use that. And if it's yeah. not, then we don't. But as long as I've, you know, as a team, you know, not, you know, that we have an understanding that we need to cover this, we need to cover that. And yeah. this is, you know, the, the platform. But, I mean, it's an amazing team. I mean, Leslie Jenninson, who, you know, yeah. I know that, um, you know, Leslie and I, I mean, we worked together at Sassoon's again. So, I mean, so this history. We ha yeah, it's kind of like, she's like my kind of work wife. My wife, <laughs> my wife, my wife said she needs a gold medal at the end of this because she probably spends more time with me than, um, you know, my wife Elise does. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I hope you're listening, Leslie. That's brilliant. That's br but, so we have a, but we have a golden rule. We never sit next to each other on the plane. Do, oh, you th and do you think that's why you're still friends? Probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, that time apart, we say. Yeah, you know, it's true. And also, you're not always at your best if you've been flat out working and you're tired and you've got a long flight. So it's, you know, it can be a bit touchy. No, I can understand that. And who who do you look up to in hairdressing? So. Oh, wow. So many. Um, I mean, ooh, I mean, there are so many people. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm, when I was at Sassoon's, I was actually... I spent some time assisting Guido. Wow, okay. Um, which I wish I could have had more time. I wish I was younger, you know. I mean, right. I, I would, I mean, any advice I would give to, you know, a young kid in this industry is, you know, so, uh, apart from work hard and, and go for it, is, is try and surround yourself with great people. And if you can yeah. assist, then that's a, that's a really, you know, a great thing to, to be able to do. And yeah. I was very lucky to work with Guido. I think I did about four seasons with him. Okay. And we, you know, I mean, I mean, the, the man's a genius and, you know, and people like Eugene, you know, genius, Sam McKnight. And then they, they've all got their own thing. Yeah, their own style. Uh, in a way. But I mean, I look up to all of them. And, you know, but I look up to some of the kids as well. I mean, some of the stuff the kids are doing, yeah. you know, really inspire me. Um, I mean, I can take inspiration from anywhere. Oh, that's good. And you did mention most, who's the most scared you've been to cut their hair? The most scared? Because um, didn't the big man himself ask for you to cut his hair when you were in London? Oh, um, Vidal. Yes. Yeah. God, I never <laughs> forget that. God, it makes me go all, <laughs> even now thinking about how, yeah, I think it, I think it was Mark Hayes called me press office and he said where are, what are you doing where are you and I was like I'm you know I'm obviously in the salon he said right Vidal's coming in at three oh. and, I was like, and and he goes what you would you know need he wants his hair cut and I'm like okay yeah thanks you know, there was part of me I mean you know every time I get a call or you know you know whether it's Mark bringing me up saying to do Vidal or my agent saying yeah. got this job I mean yeah. still now I get those butterflies and I kind yeah, of that's good. you know I'm so you know, it's just great to be in that position where you're working with these incredible people. I mean, not just, you know, supermodels every day that look gorgeous, but just people that have achieved things in their life. Yeah. And, and to do Vidal, you know, after working for the company, it was, you know, it was, you know. Be I mean, up there as a special moment. Yeah. What What's the best bit of advice you've ever been given? Um, work hard. You know, be nice to people. My dad's all my parents have always instilled that in me, you know, kind yeah. of be humble about what you do, just be really nice to people. And I think it's important. Well, it gets um, paid back, doesn't and, it? Yeah, and enjoy yourself. You know, don't do you know, listen, you know, the reason why I'm I still enjoy what I do. 
yeah, you can tell that shines through that you still love it. There's a lot of love for you. Um, Julie Medlin, oh my God, what a fantastic career. Christos Michelodis, great educator, amazing stylist. And then just lots of love hearts. Um, Ellie Ton Grotenhus, we believe in you. Um, so lots of people sending lots and lots of love oh, your way. And fun. well, I think also people, you don't do this kind of thing very often. So it's, I mean, I, I mean, I can't believe we've already done half an hour. I could talk for another hour easy and be like, there's so many things I want to ask you. Yeah. Um, what does the future look like for you? Um, the future's, I mean, I'm in a good place. You know, I kind of, I think this time that I've had off has really made me aware of, um, you know, what, you know, where I'm going in the next, you know, I mean, I'm no kid anymore, you know. I've had been, you know, I've been working on a project myself for the last five years, which has been very right. exciting. And I've, over the last kind of couple of months, I've um, pushed forward with that a little bit more. And in the next few months, you know, the beginning mm -hmm. of next year, it should be, you know, it, it's okay. going to be quite exciting times. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. So more, plenty so more think, still to I come. Personal project is definitely there and, and really continuing to do, you know, what I yeah. do, being very fortunate to work with some amazing people, whether yeah. it's photographers, art directors or, or clients, you know. Yeah. Sharon Malcolm, she said, loving this, Jane, you're an inspiration to me, Tyler. Oh, cha cha cha, love Shazza. We love Sharon. We, we really do love Sharon. So what, again. What, what energy, eh? I know, well, we if we could bottle we could that energy, of yeah. Sharon, <laughs> a little bit of Sharon fairy dust, the world yeah. would be a happier place, that's for sure. So much love to you, Sharon. My final question, um, what would you say to your 18 year old self, knowing what you know now? Get out of the pub. <laughs> what would I say to myself? Oh, get out of the pub, that's the best <laughs> answer I've had on these. <laughs> <laughs> no, surely it's not. Um, no, it wouldn't be. I didn't spend much time in the pub because I was always... It's working. Uh, what, what would I tell myself? Um, yeah. I'd probably say you're doing all right. You know, you're kind yeah. of... You'll be okay. You know, you're doing what you thought, you know, you're doing exactly what you, you know, you, you set out to do and, and in, you know, you're, you're enjoying it, I think. No, brilliant. I'm going to sneak in a final question because Julie Medlin, she's been watching us from start to finish. Who cuts your hair? Well, <laughs> funny enough, anybody, it doesn't, you know, I'm kind of, as long as it's, as long as it doesn't take longer than five minutes, but actually oh. my son has been cutting my hair during lockdown. He's, um, my son is 16 and he, he kind of gave himself the skinhead and he did okay. all that and he's like, I can do yours, dad, you know, I kind of know how to do a bit of a, so he's been doing it. And now I realise that I don't need to get my hair cut by anyone else now. Is he and he's doing a good job, is he? He's doing a good job, yeah. So know. do you think he might follow dad's footsteps? Absolutely not. Really? No. No, he's got plans. You know, okay. he wants, well, they want good. an empire of property, he says. Oh, fair you know, enough. That's his thing. Yeah. Well, so, good for him. But at least he knows he can earn a couple of quid, you know, shaving his mates. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for talking to me no jane thank you um, thank you so much for having me no it's been an you made, absolute you made it easy thank you oh well that's good that's how it should be just to, i want people to relax and just talk to us so thank you so so much i really hope i'll get to see you in person soon yeah, um so yeah. a good luck with everything that's going on and i will see you soon and thank you again thank you very much jane a pleasure take care tyler lots okay. of love bye, bye.